Welcome back, friends. If you haven't been here before, I am Susan Clifton, and I'm here in my Baca studio in Pompano Beach, Florida. And today we're going to do a project where I show you how to use natural sand from Liquitex and add it to a wood panel to help that wood panel absorb some of the paint. So we're gonna do an eight by eight board, heavily textured, and then at the end, I'm going to show you a little trick to make that nice and glossy and bring out those colors without using a resin. So stay tuned. Okay, so I have painted my two boards. On this one, I'm just going to put a little bit of this sand. It's called natural sand. It's a, a acrylic medium by Liquitex. This is an old jar, so I don't know if the label still looks like this. They, they tend to change frequently. So I'm just going to put a little bit of this to leave overnight. And then tomorrow I will show you uh, why I like to, to work with a little bit of sand. Now you could also mix this with the gesso so that when you paint it on, you just get a very light coating. And the reason why I'm only doing it on part of it is I'm gonna show you what happens when you paint without the sand and then when you paint with the sand. And we can just like lay this on thick and make it really sort of interesting. And on the other board, we're gonna really do a design and we're gonna lay on this sand again with a, with a knife, but this will take like overnight to dry. Okay, another thing I'm gonna try down here, I have no idea if this is gonna work or not. We're gonna try to put some of this medium on with a stencil. This is one of the reusable stencils that I made with my Cricut. I'm trying to hold it very steady. This is just a test, so I'm just going to do part. I think that's going to be nice. I better wash that or it's not going to come off. Okay, so in just a little bit after this is dry, it's going to seem like just minutes to you, but it's going to be overnight. Um, and then we will experiment with the color. Okay, so I'm trying a different angle. <laughs> One of these days I'm going to get this right. Um, Anyway, so here, here are the boards that I made. They're dry now. And uh, this, this is the uh, texture through the stencil. And this is the freeform rough texture. Okay, so now I have a little bit of yellow paint here. First, I'm just gonna use the, yellow is very transparent. So I want you to see what happens. Now this is the black gesso board with no sand. Okay, now this is the black gesso board with sand and it's grabbing the paint a little bit better. Now if I add a little bit of white, you see how the, the sand is sort of grabbing the paint better. Well, let's see what happens over here. Interesting. So you get a combination of the two. The stripes look fuller, they're brighter, and it's because it can grab the paint. So I think that was a good example. Oops, the other video I shot disappeared into the ether. Sorry, but let's keep going. Okay, so I've decided that I'm going to do different shades of this um, phthalo blue around the edges, maybe mixed with a little green gold and some yellow. And then right here in the center, we're going to do a spot of orange with some yellow and some red. So I'm going to start with the yellow. a little 
little bit of the orange and start mixing it in. And I'm probably going to need some white. I'm going to let some of this dry and then put another layer, especially with the yellow on top. Okay, so now I'm going to try to start here. And I might even leave some of this black peeking through. And I'm gonna go very dark on the bottom. a little bit of this magenta color but I think I'm going to mix with this and see what happens if I bring a little bit of magenta in here it might blend a little bit with I think I have to do a second coat clean my brush <laughs> um, hey you know I a lot of times I don't like to clean my brush because then it some interesting things happen, but um, we might want to add some red in here. We might want the paint to dry a little first so it doesn't turn brown. Um, but we have a little bit of touch of it, so I kind of like in that. When you blend colors a little bit, you get you know, using the same colors on the same canvas or board in this case, um, you get a cohesive look. I definitely wanted the darkest more towards the bottom. And I just noticed that you couldn't really see this. Let me move this out of the way. Put it on the other side. So as you can see, I was doing a little bit of red, a little bit of magenta here, maybe even introduce this other color down in the corner. 
You want, you want the eye to move on your canvases. You always want you know, something sort of happening, um, bringing the eye around. So the lightness is up here and it's kind of carrying, you know, this, this yellow green or green gold is bringing your eye over and then the darkness is kind of pulling you over to this side. So at least that's how, that's how I, how I do it. Okay, so now I'm going to go in to where I had the black channels and I'm going to neaten it up a little bit with my black gesso. I'm Don't be too fussy with this, just, just um, this is like a very, you know, that's what I like about textured things, they're, they don't, they're not fussy. You don't have to have any perfect lines or um, don't rest your palm on the canvas if it's still wet. Be careful. But anyway, it's not fussy, it's just something that you're having fun with and the end result because of all that gorgeous texture is you know pretty fantastic i think especially if you keep your colors nice and bright definitely have some bright areas even if you go dark in other areas So I'm going to go back to that yellow color, get my palette in the, in the shot as well. Let's go back to the yellow if we can. You can accentuate this texture by going more dry brush over it like that. I like that better, it's a little more interesting. Okay, so my camera died on me. <laughs> and I was working on this like center area, adding more yellow. Um, I kind of did a little dry brush over the um, raised sections to sort of really take advantage of um, the texture. It accentuates the texture, and as you can see, we have a lot of texture going on here. So. Um, but I really wanted to bring out like sort of that dotted section a little bit and also, you know, bring in a little bit more of that magenta color as well as the reds, you know, just sort of uh, really highlight that area and I love the way it came out. So now we are going to add a glossy finish to this. So how are we going to do that? Last week I did this one and it was just as textured as this one but you don't see any of that texture after I put the art resin on it. Now I'm still happy with this. I love, you know, I love the way this looks, but I think that we lost all the texture, although the texture helped me achieve this painter, painterly effect, um, we lost it, we lost the texture. And I think some people would prefer the texture. So, so in order to retain all of this fabulous texture, especially here in the center, 
I'm going to use pouring medium but without any color. So Liquitex pouring medium is usually what you would do to do an acrylic pour painting. It, dry, it dries clear when you use it without any paint. So it doesn't add any pigment to your paints when you're mixing it for a pour. So I got this idea like, well, what if you don't add any pigment to it? What happens then? And I discovered that it dries clear, glossy. It's self-leveling, which means you retain your texture. So um, this is what we're gonna do now. We're gonna do it very similar to pouring a um, art resin, but we're gonna use acrylic pouring medium. It's very similar to art resin in, in that it is it needs to be level and it also runs off the sides and sticks to the bottom and makes little bubbles. So I taped up the sides, ran it around to the bottom. And now we are going to see if we are level. Okay, so this is much easier because we don't have to mix anything. We're going to use this right out of the bottle. And we're going to start from the center. And you know, we could use our hands with this. So I'm going to go get my gloves. Let some of that spread out. Okay, the other thing I could do to coax it along is sort of tilt, the way we do with an acrylic pour. We could tilt. Let's see, see if we have enough pouring medium on here. I don't think we have enough, so I'm going to go and pour some more. into the corners. Now I think I have too much. <clears throat> so we might let some of it run off. And then we can always scoop it back up and put it back in the bottle because we definitely want to retain our texture. So I'm going to let some of this run off. I definitely put too much. You know, we have to be careful because now, because it ran over so much, I'm going to make sure I clean up the bottom a little bit. So I don't know if you could see, but it is starting to show. I can see that our texture is, is peeking through, but it still seems a little heavy down here. So I am going to try to take some more of that off. I haven't done this in a really long time, and what I'm just remembering now is that I think I used a sponge brush when I did this in the past instead of my hands and I kind of brushed it on instead of trying to guess how much I needed. So I'm going to coax some more of this off because I'm really, I don't want it to be cloudy down at the bottom. Maybe I'll use a brush. Now, you don't have to worry about the brush strokes because it is self-leveling. It will work itself out. So I could have just apply this with a brush. Okay, I'm going to try to zoom in so you can see. Right now it's looking a little cloudy, but it will dry clear. So here's a comparison. This is last week's art resin on a very textured surface. 
just like the surface we did this week. And look at how flat it made it look. I still love the way it looks, but it's very flat. And I kind of missing all that texture a little bit. So I think Art Resin Pours on something flat and not so textured is fantastic, especially on a colorful item like this. But for something textured, I think the acrylic pouring medium does a much better job. So as you can see, we are seeing every little nook and cranny all the texture is still there but it's nice and glossy and our colors are popping so i think you know when comparing these two i still think this one wins <laughs> tell me what you think leave a comment below so thank you for stopping by i hope you enjoyed this video and that it helps you in some way that you get one little nugget out of it then i've done my job so even if the only thing you get out of this video is this acrylic pouring medium, then wow, I hope you enjoy it. See you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.